I have fought a very family against white domination. I have fought very firmly against black domination. I cherish the ideal of a new South Africa where all South Africans are equal. For anybody who changes his principles depending on whom he is dealing, that is not a man who can lead a nation. Apparently, Mr. Koppel, you have not listened to my argument. If you have done so, then you have not been serious in examining it. I have replied to one of our friends here that I have refused to be drawn into the differences that exist between various communities inside the USA. You have not commented that I am going to offend anybody by refusing to involve myself in the internal affairs of the USA. <clears throat> of the USA. <laughs> Why are you so keen that I should involve myself in the internal affairs of Cuba and Libya? No. I expect you to be consistent. I don't know if I have paralyzed you. No, 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 no. I... I'm afraid, Mr. Mandela, that, that paralysis does not set in quite that easily in my case. <laughs> the point... Uh... When I phoned some place in my country and a lady answered the telephone, I then asked, to whom am I speaking? She said, you're speaking to me. <laughs> I said, well, lady, I know I'm speaking to you. But what's your name? She said, who are you to ask for my name? What's your name? <laughs> I said, well, lady, as soon as you tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. But as we argued as to who should tell his or her name, she became very cross. And she said, you seem to be a backward person. <laughs> Have you passed your matric? <laughs> now matric in our country is a university and possession of a matric certificate. I might work hard and pass my matric and be in the same class as you are. That was crazy. She said, you will never be in my class and bend the telephone. <laughs> How I wish if you were here today. the very right to be human 
is denied every day to hundreds of millions of people as a result of poverty and the unavailability of basic necessities such as food, jobs, water and shelter, education, health care, and a healthy environment. As I sit in Kuno, my village, and grow as ancient as its hills, I will continue to entertain the hope that there has emerged a cadre of leaders in my own country and region, on my continent and in the world, which will not allow that any should be denied their freedom as we were, that any should be turned into refugees as we were, that any should be condemned to go hungry as we were, that any should be stripped of their human dignity as we were. The time for the healing of the wounds has come. The moment to bridge the chasms that divide us has come. The time to build is upon us. We have at last achieved our political emancipation. We pledge ourselves to liberate all our people from the continuing bondage of poverty, deprivation, suffering, gender, and other discrimination. We commit ourselves to the construction of a complete, just, and lasting peace. We understand it still that there is no easy road to freedom. We know it well that none of us acting alone can achieve success. We must therefore act together as a united people for national reconciliation, for nation building, for the birth of a new world. Let there be justice for all. Let there be peace for all. The sun shall never set on so glorious a human achievement. Let freedom reign. Then you were convicted in 1964 for um, a conspiracy against the state. And in your, when you pleaded, you said that I am willing to die for this cause. This is a very tough thing to say. Yes, <clears throat> I uh, had to say that, not from a spirit of bravado, but because I genuinely felt that uh, they were going to hang us. And uh, it is the desire of every freedom fighter <clears throat> to disappear under a cloud of glory rather than that of shame. It is the task of a freedom fighter when you see that uh, the end of your days has come to leave a tradition of uh, bravery, determination to face even death for your principles. And uh, I thought about it. It was not because I was brave, but because one had a duty to perform. Mm -hmm at that moment. I have dedicated my life to this struggle of the African people. I have fought against white domination and I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the idea of a democratic and free society in which all persons will live together in harmony and with equal opportunities. It is an idea for which I hope to live for and to see realized. But my Lord, 
if it needs be, it is an idea for which I am prepared to die. In 1993, I was walking along the street when I met a couple of tourists from a well-known Western country. And then the husband stopped and said, Mr. Mandela, I said, well, many people mistake me for that chap. <clears throat> and he said, uh, would I be entitled also to mistake you for that chap? I say, well, you'll be doing what many people do. He then turned to his wife and said, darling, Mr. Mandela, she was completely unimpressed. <laughs> and she said, uh, what is he famous for? <laughs> and the husband, in his embarrassment, uh, dropped the voice. And he said, Mr. Mandela, Mr. Mandela. <laughs> and uh, the dear lady said, but I asked you, what is he famous for? <clears throat> And without waiting for an answer from the husband, she turned to me and said, what are you famous for? <clears throat> I must confess I couldn't answer that question. <clears throat> we are therefore pleased to announce that we are able once again to increase old age pensions. I'm very excited about this. Because in Davos, in Switzerland, I told the plenary session that in a few months, I'll be standing next to the road <laughs> saying, please help, unemployed, <laughs> no money, <laughs> a new wife, 